Hey everybody, welcome back to another video with Hero Academy 2. I should say that this video is also sponsored by Robot Entertainment. This is a sponsored video, which means we're going to be doing stuff that shows off the game because the wonderful people at Robot Entertainment said they wanted to do some cool stuff with us. And I said, well, let's do it. Um, so if you watch the first tutorial video, you'll know the basics of what's going on in the game. This, uh, this video is less about the basics and more about some of the beginning parts of the, the campaigns that sort of are unlocked for free when you play the game. Um, you can unlock uh, several other campaigns and more challenges and stuff with crystals, um, but which you can earn by doing things or you can purchase. So, these campaigns are a little bit... Part of the basics, uh, I would say that we're going to be talking on, we're going to talking be talking about the council uh, campaign, at least the last part of the council campaign, and we're going to be talking about the last part of the Dark Elves campaign. So the first two pieces, as you see right here, uh, Sir Baldric Battle and Cobalt Queen Combat, are very much teaching you how to deal with melee combat as well as ranged combat. And the third one takes both of those skills and kind of puts them together. So... We're going to go right into it. We're going to use our Council Starter deck. I have a, I have a deck that I kind of threw together, which we'll talk about later. But we use the Council Starter deck because by if you guys are watching this video, you're probably only dealing with the Council Starter deck. So might as well play with something that you guys will know. So we'll jump into this, and there's a few things that you should watch out for. For one, it's a little bit uh, tilted towards your end because of the fact that you have two crystals with a double the health of both of their crystals as well. Um... So, know that, but also know that if you're not careful, they will charge you, uh, and they'll come after you and do stuff like that. So, for the first move we're going to make, um, there, uh, we're going to drop a Gurgle Pot. I like having the Gurgle Pot here, and I like setting it up in a position that is close to the crystal, because the Gurgle Pot, while it is a ranged um, structure, so it's a movable structure, and it is a ranged attack, you basically want it to die especially around melee characters and around enemy crystals because of the fact that when it does die it has a, an area of effect that just explodes and does a damage does one damage to everything so if we put it near the crystals we're actually in good shape what it what you need to, do need to know about this part of the campaign is it's basically going to play what you have in your starter deck they have everything they have access to everything you have in your starter deck as well um so you're going to see a lot of uh footmen and you're also going to see a lot of rooks and you're probably and you're definitely going to see the king himself come out. The king is rather powerful. So when you see him come out, you do need to be a little bit careful, but know that it shouldn't be too much of a problem once uh, once things are actually in in, in movement. Um, so from here, we're going to we're going to leave him and see if we can dust the one in the back. That way we get at least a little bit of damage on everything. Um the next piece we have is probably going to be the Rook, because we can take the Rook and actually go after most things. Um, we're, I, I, may, I maybe placed her a square down. I want to keep her away from the Gurgle Pot here, because you know what happens when that goes. Um, we can play Attack Pony, which Attack Pony is very interesting because he gets uh, plus two attack when he moves. And that he can move anywhere. He just has to move at least one square, and he gets plus two attack power, which brings him to three and three, uh, plus the the one armor. He's actually a really powerful character, and we will definitely bring him out now. Um, we can move. Ac yeah, actually, it's a good idea. If we move him there, he doesn't. He loses this right away, but he'll be in a decent position for the next move. In fact, that may have been a mistake, um, but we'll pay for it later. We'll pay for it later. To be in, in all honesty, I haven't played this deck in a little bit, but in getting prepared, uh, I actually played a different deck that didn't have a pony in it because he does become a little bit of a problem. Um, but good thing we didn't get punished for it because what we can do is essentially uh, move him and just dust for three. Um, we'll move here as well. And with this, we'll take... We're actually not going to attack just yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring out the Quartermaster and see if he can actually summon a mace. Uh, it's a Butter Slayer. It's not terrible. Uh, it's not what we wanted, though. So uh, every time you, you summon the Quartermaster, his fanfare is to draw a weapon and put in your, and you put in your deck, which, you know, 
obviously is an RNG factor that can come into play and, you know, not come into play. Uh, if we had a footman out there, we would use it on him. But uh, know that it's you're, you're playing with fire for the most part. Um, before we do anything more, I'm actually going to get rid of this this uh, this bow here. If you if you didn't know from either the tutorials or um, from the video, because the first video we didn't really talk about it, it's a little bit of an advanced strategy. Um, but if you don't, if you're full up five cards and you don't like anything and you can't play anything, you still have extra mana. You can always discard a card and replace it with something else. You can only do that once per turn, but it is something that that can come into play for you and be very nice. Uh, we'll, we'll summon a rook again. That's almost our max limit. We'll take damage on the crystal here. Move you up. He, she's probably going to attack, I would say, probably the quartermaster unless she moves. Uh, she can also attack the uh, the pony guy here too, but that's I think would be a bad move. So here comes the king. We need to dust his friends um, quickly or else we're going to take a lot of damage. So he's still up. Uncoordinated. Can no longer revenge. That's actually a good idea. And I think it stays on him. So we're in good shape for him. I'm not going to worry too much about it. Um, who took damage? He's th one, three. She took damage. Let's go ahead and heal. Uh, let's heal her up. She took damage too, but that's okay. Um, we can actually dust that. And then we can uh, dust that. And we're done. So, in this campaign, as you see... You want to take out the crystals before the king can actually do anything. Because, uh, well, he's very powerful. He's probably the most powerful character that will be played in this campaign. So be careful with that. And that is that is the entire council campaign. It's not too difficult, but it is something worth talking about, in my opinion. So the next piece we're going to talk about is the Dark Elves. Or the, or the, are the Dark Elves. It's the Dark Elves campaign. So the first two are not basic not like the not like the council campaign they're not basic but it does show you sort of what the dark elves are about so it's still a learning experience it's just not the basics it's more of the more of the advanced uh advanced uh, tactics based on what the dark elves are so basically going into a new world of the game that you may have not seen yet the first one is all about the uh the first leader and it mostly has to do with poison um, so you're learning how to deal with poison and, and, and attack it and go around it. The first one is the Merrick's Melee, which is a lot more necromancy. So you'll see things um, die or at least be easily killed and then uh, used as sacrifice for a lot of other heroes. But what we're going to do is we're going to go into number three, which is to face the queen herself. Now, this one is a little bit more difficult of a campaign. We're still going to be playing with the Council Starter deck um, because... It's a little bit more difficult, and I think it's worth still learning for it. So um, there's a few things that's gonna that are gonna come out with this with the Queen Sarah's deck. Um, she has a few heroes that when she drops, it does one damage to everything on the board. And I I want to bait that out early, but I don't think it's necessarily easy to come out. Um, she plays things a little bit differently, uh, which is okay. Uh, based on what you play first and that's what's cool about the campaigns is there's no script to it um, So even though you're seeing me play you're still gonna have to put together your um, Your strategies and tactics to be able to defeat it She found an archer which I couldn't do anything about uh, which is totally okay um, But we can take her out of range if we want to or Let's see we've got five so three um, damage to a hero. We can actually just kill her. It's not really a big deal. Just kill her, take her out, and then we'll, we'll dust this one. So she's got two smash. So we, she's going to be our crystal lady for sure. Uh, we'll bring out the footman. We'll give him an extra sword. And uh, we'll go up. So what I used on him was a power. Now in the first video we talked about how powers work and how weapons work. What we're doing here is not giving him a new weapon. We're upgrading his weapon that already exists. So we can actually add a new weapon to him and it won't change anything. Um, it's not going to replace his weapon. That's important to know when you when you do to start drawing weapons, especially with the quartermaster. Okay, so this is another part. So not only is she going to drop 
things that do damage to everything, but she's also going to drop something like this. So essentially, if we dust this spider with something else up, it will give it more strength. So, what we're going to do is we're actually going to spend cards to get rid of it now. That way it doesn't give anything else more strength. As you can see, well, it's gone now, but the spider, once it's dead, it gives a random ally plus one to attack, which is definitely not what we want. Um, we've got two. We're going to give this another one, and he's going to actually take this crystal out, no problem. So we've got two down, two to four, no problem. So here it is. Damage, one damage to everything. It's going to take out everything. Um, for plus one, and eh, she took she took our footman out, but it's not bad. It's not bad, especially with the fact that we did a lot of damage back. Now we want a unit out, and uh, all we have left is the wolf pup. But we do want a unit out, so we want to be careful. I, well, this is very expensive. I'm just gonna discard it. We don't need it right now. Um, the Quartermaster, we don't really need either, but we will play it because we do need units on the board. We do need to keep the board in our favor. Um, hopefully we can bring him close and bait out her attack, and that should be okay. Um, if we take, if she attacks, she's done. Um, okay, so here comes the Queen. The Queen is a little bit of a pain in the butt as well, just like the King was. Um, so she has two in Rage, which becomes a huge huge problem um i would say unless you can take her out be in one move do not even touch her so two enrage means she's going to get two extra strength if she is damaged at all which is obviously an issue if she dies she summons a royal pet um and she also has one smash so when she summons her royal pet that's also a problem you want to be very careful with that as well um the first thing we want to do is there's a few things, actually. Let's see if we can move her. Alright, that's not the right way. At all. In fact, it even damaged her, which is very bad. So, even though I said what I said... Well... We can probably take her out soon. That's one here. That's one here. Um... Well... I think we just have to go on full on out. That's still one there. Um, we're going to take him out because we don't want him to be doing any more damage. Let's see if we can move forward. Hopefully not get attacked here. We put ourselves in a weird position based on the RNG, which is obviously an issue. But I think uh, for the most part, we're in we're in business. Um, we just have to, we have to recover from what we just did. So he's going to bring out one. He's going to bring out one, two. That's five. Um... Five, that's two. Okay, so two and two. Let's go ahead and give you... We'll give you this. He's only got one damage, which is a problem. But, if we can start to take her out and not get damaged back, we're in good shape. What's going to happen right now is she's probably going to attack the rook. No, she's actually going to go after my crystal because she knows she's very powerful. Um, it's okay, we're going to take him out. There it is. And then... Uh, this one's gone. If we drop this, we're going to get poisoned. But I think we... So there's her spider. Okay. So what this means is when we take these guys out, we're going to be in trouble as far as gaining energy and stuff like that. Um, yeah, this is free. We'll go ahead and just give it to him. It wouldn't have taken him out anyway, but still, it's it's better than not having it. So here comes another poison. Um, as you can see, things can shift back and forth very quickly. There's the kill. There's the poison. Okay, so things are going uh, not wonderful, but I think we're in we're in okay shape because they're not dead yet. Okay, so we're gonna heal him up. We're going to do the damage here. I'm going to give him this power. And we're going to just move him. Because we're going to have to... We're going to try to take out these crystals. Um, if they take him out, he's going to explode. Which is good for us. Hopefully the spiders don't go after the crystals. Oh, okay. Perfect. So that's, that's actually what we wanted. Because now we just took out the spider without even doing much. Um... Nothing is nothing is at risk just yet. 
but we're getting there. Um, this one's going to go away. We're going to heal him up. And now he's got three, so we're okay. Do the damage to the crystal. Keeping him alive. Um, we're going to try to bait this. Actually, no, we're just going to kill him. So he's, she's poisoned, which is okay. Uh, we can heal again, which does get rid of the poison, which is nice. So here's that. Here's one. Okay, he's enraged as well. He's going to attack, probably. And she's dead. Okay. Well, we're not getting rid of that poison. And we're down to zero on the board. But we do have this Mr. Pony here who is going to go all the way. And now he has three. Can't attack unless he moves, but that's okay. So, we, okay, he just got rid of the crystal. Why, why did he do that? Sacrifice the crystal for that. Interesting. That's why, because that one's dead. I see. Okay, so, we're going to take this out. We're going to use this pony to defend everything. Um, the next piece is heal him. We need to be able to summon one more thing to go after the crystal. What do we have? He's gonna, she's gonna shoot and enrage again. Okay. Um. Well, we can use Fist for the Gods and take her out, but we, we do want to... The problem is we do want to be able to summon somebody else, but I think we're in okay shape if we do it this way. And then we move we move him, make him more powerful. She's dead. He's still alive. Barely, but he's still alive. Here's a wolf pup. Not a problem. Sounds It's getting pretty desperate, I think. Uh, and then he's going to gain more. Okay, so he's dead, but that's okay. Well, Pup's still... Okay, here comes a couple things. So, we've got five. We're going to play both of them. And then we're going to use this lion to get over here and actually give him some more armor and stuff like that. So, he needs to die if possible. Hopefully, we can bait this out. If he moves, we're in trouble. But if, if not, then I think it should be okay. Oh, there it is. dead so we're gonna heal and give him one and we're gonna try to get over here this is our last chance to defeat this wolf pups out gonna go for the attack yep he's down okay we've almost got him We've almost got him. Uh, seven. So we're going to heal for two. Actually, we're not going to heal. This one's going bye-bye. Because we got Smash. So that was a lot closer than I thought it would. I've played this campaign now several times. And it's gone a different way every single time. And I think that's cool. I think that's one way to show that this game has a lot of uh, differences to it. Uh, if you guys enjoyed that, if you guys enjoyed what we had going on, obviously there were some there were some really risky plays and some things I wanted to show to show how things can go wrong for you and things how how things can go right. Um, but if you liked it and you haven't downloaded this game, there's a link down in the description. Please click it and use the code Danotage, and you'll be able to both download the game and use uh, and get a free premium pack to use however you like. So I hope that uh, things go well for you, and if you like the video, and if you liked how we do things here, please subscribe to the channel, like the video, and actually, have a wonderful day. I'll see you guys next time. Bye!